Welcome, world, to the very first Level Up <laughs> podcast. Uh, this is John Arms. I'm John Arms. I'm with my friend uh, Eric Thurwinger. And with the wonderful podcast producer, Sapphire Gilpin, who I'm learning to call Saffy. Hi, everybody. It is so good to be here. I have oh been excited God. about this all day long, John. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of leveling up to do. And for people who are just tuning in for your first time, uh, which is everybody, because this is our first one. So everybody who's listening, uh, what we are going to do here is we are going to talk about leveling up yeah. in business, in life, in culture, in sales, in planning and execution. There's a lot of leveling up to do in this world, and uh, and we're going to take it on. And that uh, I think, Eric, that's that's what we're going to do. Correct? That is what we're going to do, and the time is right for this. I have, yeah. uh, like you. You know, we have clients that we talk with, and then I, I have speaking engagements all over the country. And you know, it's been it's been a while now where I've started to really realize that people are ready for this. They they're moving out of survival mode and now into thrival mode, and mm-hmm. they just want to know how. You know, it's it's it was yeah. It's been a long time since March of 2020. Oh my God, and, yeah. And and you know, you, we you know what, Eric? Just, you, yeah. you know what? Since then, I think we've leveled down as a society. You know, like it was so hard on us and so difficult for leaders and yeah. staff and people and everybody. It, it sort of it didn't just pause, right? Yeah. I think we leveled down. So okay, let's level back up. Let's level right. back up. So today you know, I think there's a lot of areas that that went down and then we accepted it because it mm-hmm. Everything lasted longer than we thought, right? It was two weeks to flatten the curve. Oh, my God. And then maybe it was going to be three. And then just a few months. And then two years later, you're still coming out of this. So I agree. I think here's what I've seen. Here's what I saw leveled down. Probably the worst one of all was just ambition. I think people lost their Mm -hmm. ambition. They lost their drive went down. Morale went down. Hope went down. Expectations went down. People were just settling. I mean, it was the era of if somebody would just show up to work, we'll take him. Yeah, but he's grumpy. He's grouchy. He doesn't yeah. know what he's doing. We'll take him. Oh, my and, God. And they were accepting. Survival like, mode? Just, is, that, is that just survival mode? I mean, that's just kind of what happens when you just have to get into the survival gear? I think everybody was naked and afraid, John. And I mm-hmm. think that when you're on naked and afraid, you'll eat stuff that probably you wouldn't during a, <laughs> <laughs> when you're back Bugs. home. <laughs> yeah, that bug looks great. So I, I think that we were all caught off guard at, at what happened to our world. Yeah. And then we were trying to run businesses inside of this crazy world. Yeah. And people just accepted it. We said, all right, we're going to we're gonna just try and make it through. People put their head down and they were in survival mode. And then, you know, for me, about March of 2023, you know, the beginning of this year, which yeah. would have been the three-year anniversary of the de- uh, pandemic being declared, I started to notice a trend in people that their heads looking down, leveling down, as you said, and, and being there, they started to look up when you would say, hey, maybe it's time to level up and <clears throat> maybe we can elevate right now. And they started to go, yeah, you know, hey, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think I might be ready. Mm-hmm. I might survive tomorrow. The sun might rise tomorrow. And if it does, I guess I should be prepared. That was really the sentiment because as a coach and and as a speaker going everywhere, I noticed that people just needed to, they needed to know how to navigate what we were in. And that's when I created those presentations. As you know, I had Mm -hmm. leading through chaos, selling through chaos, planning through chaos, just getting through chaos. And everybody's like, I did that. Um, but but you're talking about you know a, about the beginning of this year. Yeah. That's when there was a, a mental shift, the paradigm shift, if you will, and people started being very interested in how do I get to the next level. They they did, and and they became intentional about it. And that's actually the subject of today's show. Everybody is uh, what we wanted to talk about um, for this episode was the rise, the increase in interest and intentionality. And and all of that when it comes to career coaching, development, self-development, business development, sales development, all of these level up things. And Eric, I've got some data. I got data. I, want to hear I know data. you I know you do, and I'm always excited to hear the data that you discovered. That's right. So I use this wonderful little tool. It's called um 
uh, G2, uh, uh, Recon G2. It's like, a, oh, you'll love it because reconnaissance, right? Coming from I like the military. it. I like it already. And it does a recon on all sorts of like just what's out there in the world. And it stacked up some data for me. So get this. This is daily search volume under a couple of things here. There's 8,400, just in the U.S., 8,400 people every day look for a career coach. Mm. Uh, 7,600 look for a coach near me. Uh, 2,200 say find a career coach near me. Uh, mm. So, you know, if you do the math, and that's just some of them, right? Yeah. So there's this, like that data, the search data tells you a lot about society and it gives you a pulse. Right. And, and and it's fantastic. So you think about that, and Eric and I were talking about this, is like, man, it just seems like the appetite for getting better, for leveling up, for improving is just voracious right now. It is. There's a wave of it right now. And, you know, it's interesting because the coaching experience, I've been a coach for a long time and I've, I've coached one on one. I've coached on personal growth where people have personal mm -hmm. goals. I've coached on per, uh, professional goals. Like I, I, I want to excel in business. I want to get a promotion. Yeah. I've coached individuals. I've coached departments, teams, entire businesses. Yeah. And, and so you have to have a perception of what coaching really means. And I, I think that at the heart of it, people reach out on coaching when they're ready to go to another level or break out of a slump, which still yeah. means go to another level in their mm -hmm. life or their business. And so so to me, when I coach somebody, I always ask them what their goals are. And, mm -hmm. and I think that from 2020 to 2022, I think a lot of people, I'll, I'll tell you what leveled down, John. Yeah. People's goals. They just, they leveled them down. They just put them down for a while. I'll work on these later. Mm -hmm. and some never got around to it. And so when, when people are ready to pick up the mantle on coaching, yeah. they're really picking up the mantle, at least if you coach with me on what your goals are, because that's the first question I ask is, what are we mm -hmm. striving for here? And so yeah. the coaching side, you want to coach in your corner when you're ready to win, not just make it through the game. And so yeah. I, I think that the leveling down was like, I just hope I make it through the game. You know, uh, I, I, I hope I don't drop before the buzzer goes off. Mm -hmm. And now people are starting to say, well, you know what? While I'm in the game, maybe mm -hmm. I can win again. And yeah. that's what I might as well really, do good. I, may I as might as well, as well practice. Good. I might as well practice like LeBron practices. I might as well get to the free throw line and and take my reps and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, the, the leveling down and and and. <clears throat> People should give themselves a little a little forgiveness, right? There's the not only did the pandemic cause us to level down just out of survival, right? That's right. Um, that much social, economic, cultural, mental impact clearly is going to cause people to shut their engines down for a while, just right. to maintain. Makes yeah. perfect sense. Yep. Um, on top of that. Uh, when it's just like a reboot, right? Like just like a computer shutting down. When you restart it, all sorts of shit can happen that you're not ready for. There's a ton of it. Right? Because, <laughs> right, the stuff that was there before isn't there next, and it's this whole... So That's even right. though you sort of turn it back on, it's not back on the way it used to be. No. So the, the, the way in which people have to level up, it's like completely... You can't level up and just go back to before the pandemic. Because I write about, in, in my book, in Revolt, I write about this. I'm like, listen, things were the way they were. You know, from 1980 to 2020, whatever, like, they were the way they were. It was a shareholder economy. The, the, the capitalism did what it did. And a lot of people got a lot of money. And a lot of people didn't. And, I and a lot of people got overworked. And a lot of businesses struggled. It's like, yeah, okay. We sort of aged out of that. We're still capitalists. But we have to do so in a different way. We have to level up towards that. <clears throat> well, you know, you hit the nail on the head because things are different. We're in a different world yep. post-pandemic. And so you it, it's ill-advised to even try and accomplish your goals the way you used to or just be in that, right. that, that single mindset mm -hmm. when, when the dynamics. And even if you think about, if you just think about 9-11 for a second. Mm -hmm. That was how many years ago? 21 years 23. ago, 22, yeah. 20. Yeah. So when you look at it from that standpoint, we don't fly the same as we used to. We, everybody no. knows the amount, the the fluid ounces that you're supposed to take on. And that mm -hmm. didn't exist. You used to be able to walk on with a gallon of water if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So 
so I think that you know part of leveling up is realizing there's some there's some new variables that we have to deal with. And, and even mm-hmm. in businesses, they're still dealing with some of them. How do we handle the remote worker status? So I, mm-hmm. I believe that people want that coaching because they need to know some new techniques. And, and they're seeking coaching out and mm-hmm. in the hopes that can you help me get to here? Now, I, for me, my the number of coaching clients I have in the last six months has skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you and, mean one-to-one or a group or all the above? Want, uh, I would say all of the above, but specifically one on one. And and so here's how it worked for me as a coach. Businesses were bringing me in to meet with larger groups of people, their teams, mm-hmm. because they were trying to raise morale, get the expectations set. But I noticed that during the height of the pandemic, not as many individuals were reaching out for coaching as they are now. Mm-hmm. And this is what I think is very exciting, because if the individuals are reaching out for coaching, just imagine the dynamic it's going to have on the team, right? Oh my God. If you have a team that's not forced to be coached, but individually want coaching, mm-hmm. now that's the secret. Well, that, and, right there. And, and that's where I'm seeing the um, <clears throat> that's where I'm seeing the rise at Voyage University and teaching people fractional and the rise of fractional. Yes, is a lot of people are like, I do want to level up. I want to elevate. I want to continue on a wonderful arc. Um, but it doesn't fit in the old package, right? So they come to Fractional, like, what is this? I mean, it's a market where I can learn how to use my wisdom and market right. that. And, <clears throat> you know, it's Fractional is, going Fractional is a way of leveling up. Because what used to was, as uh, that was, that was uh, who was John Madden? Great for saying that. He goes, this guy, he'd circle on the screen and go, this guy, he's not where he used to was. And the defender was right there. <laughs> but I picked up that phrase since the 90s, like, the way it used to was, it no, is no longer. So we're looking for yeah. whether it's a career in fractional or mm-hmm. just change in the way in we lead or change in the way we participate in our jobs. We're looking for leveling up. Um, and I think we're realizing at scale, whatever we thought before doesn't really apply. Even for leaders. Yeah, I, I agree. Are you a fan of agree. Brené Brown? Say that again? Have you read, have you read Brené Brown's book, uh, Daring Greatly? I do know. I haven't read the book, but I know. Eric, you're going to love it. So she's got this famous TED Talk, and and, and you should watch her talk about it. So she talks a lot about vulnerability and how important it is and how it's a strength and all these things that for decades sort of like, you don't show your weakness. You're not vulnerable. You hide all of that stuff. And she's a she's a professor in Texas, and she's just wonderful, but she talks, her, her TikTok, not her TikTok, her, her uh, <laughs> TED Talk, yeah. TED Talk, not TikTok, uh, it's like one of the top ones, but she talks about vulnerability, and, and I sort of, I, and I, I've read her books, and I love it, but I feel like when it comes to leveling up, we're at this, almost this new age, like, yeah, I'm willing to be vulnerable. Yeah, I'm willing to assume that I'm not perfect, and there's things I don't even know. I, I think you... I think you have to be, I think vulnerable is one of them for sure. As a leader, Mm -hmm. I think transparent is one of them as a leader. I think humble. I think all of these things right now, because we're in an era where, I mean, let's just be really transparent. Starting Mm -hmm. in 2024, there's not a leader in this entire world that has ever led a team four years after a pandemic. Never happened. So to a certain extent, like you said, from 80 to 2020, here yep. you have 40 years of it's pretty much the same thing. Yep. And yep. then I could tell you, well, you know, since I've been doing this, but there is not a single person, not even a coach, not even me, not even you that can tell people, the last time I came out of a worldwide pandemic, here's how I help people level <laughs> <bundle> up. <laughs> so here's how we did it. Yeah, We've been so there. Here, here, this, this is what I'm going to say to every leader out there right now, every individual that wants to level up, pick the right coach. Yeah. Pick the coach, pick the person that has the right opportunity that knows the tactics you need. Really research it. If yeah. you're if you're looking to level up your game by going fractional, you've got to talk to John. Hands down. I mean, what you're doing in the fractional community is is not only revolutionary, but it is necessary to level up in this market. Yeah. But if somebody goes fractional without you, I mean, that's just that's a pathway I wouldn't recommend. Same thing on the goal setting or leadership side. Let's have a talk because 
I know I'm having a track record of success with people getting them to level up during these time periods. And yeah. it's actually it's it's simple, more simple than people are thinking, but it's not easy. It's simple right. with work, simple with right. hard work and dedication. And that's that's what I think you gotta really buy into that. And then we get back into the pandemic where complacency took a foothold. Yeah. People yeah. lost their drive. So for those that do want to level up, do want to accomplish their goals, do mm-hmm. want to go to new levels in their career and their yeah. success, you, you've got to follow the right people. This, that and that's, that's a challenge for a lot of people. And, and I'll say that because if you think about, you know, over career windows or arcs of time. So let's say 1980 to 2020, right? That 40-year window, it was a shareholder economy. Milton yep. Friedman said primary focus is on shareholders. It is what and it was just a theory, but it but it came true. But that created some things. The narrative of that forty year window became pretty clear, right? Work for the company. Yes. Yeah. The company is inherently good, and 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 they'll take care of you as long as you take care of them. And a lot of that, well, most of it shattered in the last few years. But the narrative was there, right? Like my dad worked for the same company for forty two years. He worked for Piper Jaffrey in Hopwood in Minneapolis. And, you know, they called him Tommy. My dad was the kindest man you'd ever want to meet. 42 years until he finally retired. Hmm. And that was normal. Yeah. So from the 50s until, you know, 2000 or whatever, or the late yeah. 90s, but he retired. And that normal, right? And, and quite honestly, they took great care of him and vice versa. Yeah. So the narrative of that generation was pretty stable, right? You can count on all of this. But right. that narrative started to decouple, like all that stability yeah. and trust. And if you work hard for the company, it'll all work out. All of that began to crumble and continues to crumble. Narratives matter. And the new narrative is different. Well, and... and- I'll tell you what your dad wasn't searching for any more than my father was, was work-life balance. I never heard them mention that. <laughs> so never. Yeah. now that's, that's part of the dialogue, which, you know, the perfect work-life balance, which some people seem to be striving for, is probably not achievable. However, I do believe that people need to level up what their balance is that they're looking for. Totally. There, there's an opportunity there, too. But what I found is... Most of the people that say they want better work-life balance just want less work. <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> saying, I want, right. I need, they never say, I want less life. <laughs> say, yeah. So they're, they're feeling off balance. But this is where I think that over the last three years, it's been hard to define things. It's been hard to define yeah. the expectations inside mm-hmm. of a workplace. It's been harder to define the leader's role, mm-hmm. what the team members should be, all these things. Right now, as people are leveling up, they get to set what their non-negotiables are. Here's what I'm looking for. And, mm-hmm. and here's what the expectations are. And here's what I'm willing to you know, put mm-hmm. into this. And then find a coach, find someone like you, a leader in, in this mm-hmm. industry on the fractional side that can help you get there. Um, but but this is a perfect time to level up. Now we're we're starting to see this, this barometer, if you will, that, that tells us where we are. Whereas I think for two years, people were just, they were dazed and confused. They were lost. They- they, they still are, Eric. I mean, I talked to somebody looking at going fractional or who's been laid off, you know, every single day, sometimes dozens of times a day. And, I, and you know, I live to help them, right? Like, no, you're awesome. You're good. It's just the old world and the new world are not the same. And you're just That's adjusting. Right. Give yourself some forgiveness. Well, I want to put some tangibles as to what that adjustment is. And, uh, and I want to talk about them. So uh, I shared with you earlier this wonderful story in Forbes. It actually was trends that started uh, early 2023 and late in 2022. But when you talk about sort of the new narrative and the new script, the new normal on where pro- on professional coaching, yeah. uh, four things come up. So I'm going to go to the stuff that, that you and I like. Get this. Uh, if you want to adjust to the new normal, and per- here's the things you have to focus on in personal development. Number one, adapt to the metaverse. Now, I don't know. That's the technical side. Maybe it just says yeah. get good at LinkedIn or whatever. <laughs> but there's a technical component that maybe wasn't as important before. Yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting. But get this. Get these next two. I just love these. Personal and business branding. Now let's stay there for a second. Personal branding. When the yeah. narrative has been your brand is the company you work for. That's your identity. That name is what gets you the promotion. Boom. Gone. Right. Personal development personal branding 
Now that's on the radar, and we have to spend time on that. So, yeah, I've got some thoughts on that. Share them. So here, here's what I think. This is why it's so important to level yourself up. And, and that's whether you use somebody as a coach, whether you go to new career direction. I believe that the workplace has encountered during the pandemic an epidemic of, of complacency. Mm-hmm. And so while some people will say there's so many variables now, it's, it, it's a tougher environment for somebody that wants to level up. When you start working on yourself, when you start focusing on your physical fitness, when you start focusing mm-hmm. on your development as a leader or honing your skills and, and accomplishing goals, mm-hmm. you start to rise above those that are complacent right now. You stand out uh, uh, faster than you would have pre-pandemic. Do you think that on that, do you think that complacency was universal? That was leaders that was investors, that was workers. Did you see it everywhere? I feel, okay, so yes, at different levels. I feel there were people that, as soon as everybody had the stay-at-home orders, I feel that there's some people that conformed to it very quickly and uh, mm-hmm. found the rhythm watching TV every day and said, hey, I, I can dig this and let me have my stimmy check and I'm good to go and whatever. Um, I feel that the side effect of, complacency for those that weren't normally were complacent nor normally complacent was then they had to adapt to a complacent world and okay. there were some leaders that are go-getters that nobody was going and getting it so I, I i feel like i feel like there's people that in the pandemic that became complacent were already on a slower path that now got to sit down then there's people that were always hustling that had to slow down and it really was hardest on them when when you're an olympic sprinter but now you're on a slow marathon, it really has shifted the the playing field for you. Sure. So, so I think some of the leaders that were in the hunt that are like, all right, well, I've always been in the hunt. I've always wanted to get after our goals. I have to hang up my hunting gear for a little bit here. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just trying to gather people. I'm just trying to get them unified again. Sure. I feel that there was different dynamics with that. So, So when people inside of the the team start to level up. I think it's so noticeable now, whereas maybe in the eighties with everybody, everybody being the next Alex P Keaton, right? Yeah. Everybody next being oh my gosh. This next person that yeah. was the worm, that was everybody. But now yeah, but that, uh, the, the, uh, the facing of our own mortality cast a different, uh, different light on yeah. the, the I, role work plays in our lives. You know, there's an interesting dichotomy there, Eric is, is, you know, you're in businesses every day. So if you witness complacency, um, however that gets articulated or people self-articulate it, there's some data that suggests the opposite, right? Like productivity went really, really high. Uh, yeah. a, a lot of, a lot of really good things uh, came yeah. out of the workforce and for the workforce for that. And I, I think it's related to when nobody has a thumb on you, right? Which yeah. is by, by virtue, if you're at home and you take your job seriously and there's no thumb on you. There's kind of you can go you can go a lot higher, right? So, I, so, so like for us at Think Great, we used to convene in the office and mm-hmm. pandemic. We had to have everybody go home, and then mm-hmm. afterward we stayed at home because we have a team that made the decision to level up. And so that mm-hmm. when they're at home and they're doing their things, it's great. What I found is is that I think it's very important. You touched down on a big word there that productivity. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a big stroke of the brush there, right? Right? There's there's a lot that can be said about productivity. Sometimes people are more productive at home because during the working hour they did get their kids off to school, they went to the gym, yeah. They were able to um, you know do all their pay their bills. Um, they don't always say how productive they were at work, but the overarching theme was I felt productive today, mm-hmm. and so here here was a a variable for leaders is. How do you track the work productivity when the people aren't in the office anymore? So, uh, so I feel that during that time period, accountability, which has always been important, just became yeah. critical. So really, that and that's a good point. If you really want to know how productive somebody is, accountability has to go up. We're we're accountable Absolutely. to each other. Yeah. So I I but here here it is. At the end of the day, this. Here it is. We're gonna blow everybody's mind right now. <laughs> this is one of the new variables in the post-pandemic world is 
how do you how do you you now have this variable of at home workers yeah. or hybrid all yep. of these things and and you have to measure productivity in that so if you were the type of leader that only dealt with people in the workplace and that that's what you knew because yeah. you met with them office to office to office and then there was the conference room and if all that's been removed that's going to be tough for that leader to level up but not impossible totally totally and and that's where the idea of leveling up in this new era yeah. What, what people call the new norm or I call the, the great new era because there are so yeah. many great opportunities. Right. We have to shift our game a little bit in order to level up. And so as leaders, if we want to have that that level up on our personal side and then the professional side, we have to figure out how to operate in this world where maybe a third of our people are now at home, a third are in the office, a third are part time in the office and out of the office. Mm -hmm. How do you? How do you then measure productivity and morale at the same time with that definition? So there's a it's lot. Yet another, it's yet another norm. It's yet another dimension. It's an, yet right. another aspect of the new normal that we need to get our get our arms around. That's um, right. And, and to the degree we can, right? A lot of this is still forming. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're still in, in, a, in, a, in, in tension from the change, right? Yeah. We haven't settled on, oh, it looks like this. Well, and so there's tension and friction on where everything's going to sort of materialize uh, and our understanding of how we did things before. I call all of that opportunity, by the way. It is. It. I always say that, you know, right. When you're going through something chaotic or something with variables and there's always a great opportunity right behind that. You just have to navigate through it. I know yeah. I would say I, I really love what you're saying, like from 1980 to 2020, that 40 year time period. Yeah. There was still a lot that happened, right? I mean, in 1980, yeah. there was no emails, right? So nope. then there was nope. emails. But here's the thing. There was also like five and a quarter inch floppy disks. And then 2020, it was mm -hmm. streaming. Here's here's the thing, though. There was a natural progression. Yeah. We leveled up in this form over 40 years. Yeah. What the pandemic did is say, all right, well, we're trying this remote thing out. Okay, everybody's remote. Yep. There was no ramp up period. No. And so, so a lot of people, I think they had their worlds rocked and they just, some are still trying. And to everything typically it. goes through that, goes through that cycle of, yeah. you know, moment of, typically around moments of innovation, right? Yeah. When you think about, you know, we have the car, so we no longer are going to rely on the horse quite yeah. as much. Still a 15 year window of adapting, right? Yeah. We've got the internet, so we don't have to rely on the mail as much. Still yeah. a 15, you know, we just, these these long periods yeah. of adapting. And then the pandemic's like, no, we're shutting the lights off on everything. <laughs> hey, so we, <laughs> hey, we have this idea of going remote. Let's just do it right now. Let's just do it this very <laughs> instant. But, you know, listen, you come from the Marines, right? You guys deal with this all the time. You have no. to, like, obviously in the Marines, like, that's like a daily experience, right? Like, oh, all of a sudden we're getting missiles thrown at us. We weren't expecting that today. No <laughs> ramp-up nobody, time. Nobody put in the request for it. Yeah, right? it's interesting because, you know, you need that ramp-up time period. That's what I think is important. So, so here's an interesting stat since you like stats. I love stats. Google, there was a, or maybe it was Gallup. I think it was Gallup, excuse me. Gallup said that, 62% of the workforce was yep. remote within 40 days of the pandemic being declared. So you're talking- A little talking, over a month. Yeah. What percent? What percent? 62. Was this global or United States? Uh, I believe it was United States. Okay. Yeah. Um, so here, here's the crazy part. Even in the military, you're going to go through boot camp. That's 90 mm -hmm. days, give or take. Then mm -hmm. you're going to go to your schooling. That could be months, if not a year of schooling. Mm -hmm. Then you may deploy. You have a about a year of ramp up time. This was, I know we've talked about going remote. Yeah, so anyways, and yeah. we're not going to train you. We're not going to develop you. We're not going to give you any strategies, but, you know, just figure it out. Yeah. So that was just one of many things. And then there was a lot of innovation that happened. I remember early on, we had clients that would host um, Team Bingo through Zoom or whatever, right? And they yeah. Were, yeah. And they were trying to do things to rally people. They were trying to do things to level up. But a lot of it was short-lived back then because yeah. every week it was something new. But but listen, we went through that time period. It wasn't just the pandemic. We had civil unrest. We had oh my God. a crazy election year. We still yeah. do. We had yeah. cancel culture, wokeness. Everything that you can imagine was hitting. So 
even people with good intentions are like, all right, you know what, damn it, it's been six months, I'm going to level up. They got knocked down by something else. It's exhausting. So, and, you know, was, on every front yes. that you would consider, on the political front, friction oh. and exhaustion. On the economic front, friction, exhaustion. Culturally, like, friction and exhaustion. It's like, dude, can can we have a break? anymore. I can't do it can, anymore. It's too much, right? It's too much. And Okay. All right. So for those listening, uh, so Eric and I have known each other for a while. And Eric has a great story that he tells, but I'm going to tell it because I think it's contextual for I'm what we're talking I'm excited to hear about. it. So there was, and I'll get some of it wrong, Eric, so you can actually just let me go. Yeah. So there was a, there was a battalion of, of uh, Marines that were stuck and they were... Um, uh, across the ocean, I believe it was in the Korean conflict, yeah. and Chesty Puller was their leader. That's right. And these Marines were stuck in the Chosen Reservoir. I'll probably get it wrong, Eric, but but, but bear with me because I'll get the point, right? You're doing great. And they're, I mean, it is tough, right? They're surrounded from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. If people could bubble up from the ground, they would. And if they could drop from the, like they were from every <laughs> direction where the, you thought they had an escape, they were stuck. Yeah. And here's this wonderful leader, Chesty Polar, great military leader name. And he says, boys, they got us surrounded. They're to our east. They're to our west. They're to our north. They're to our south. We're outnumbered. 300 to 1. And here's what he said that made everything different. They can't get away from us now. Yeah. And it, if that doesn't, it still gives me chills. And and when, when we all think about leveling up, right? Yes, we're being attacked on the work front. We're being attacked on the political front. We're being attacked on the social front. Okay, right? By the way, we still don't have it as bad as those soldiers did because they were freezing the cold, and I think they were short on ammo, if I remember correctly. And food. They were starving. And food. Right, right. <laughs> so so the human nature, like, like we can get through these things. That's right. But we need to look at, you know, embrace, okay, yeah, here it is. Here it is. How do we face such a situation? By the way, how did he get him out of that? By the way, back, back to Chessie Puller. How did he do it? So the reality is, you know, his message – I think as you peel the layers off a little bit more, there was a lot of things that a leader could have done during tough times. Right. Uh, what we have to remember is that what he did is he chose his words very wisely because at the end of the day, he wanted to win and he wanted to get his guys out of there. And yeah. when he said, hey, we're outnumbered, which they were, and it was astronomical outnumbered. Yeah, it was like 300 to one, wasn't it? It was just ridiculous. Well, okay. I, I think it was 29 to one, but it probably felt okay. like 300 to one. All right. All right. But. But the reality is, is that they're on foreign soil. They're running out of ammo. They're freezing. And, and the, there was just no, no end in sight. And, and you got to understand the mantra in the military is we used to sing songs when we ran. You know, it started off great, like one, two, three, four. I love the Marine Corps. But yeah. then it would break into if I die in a combat zone, box me up and ship me home. So wow. they, they think about death all the time because it might happen. And I believe that all of these young Marines, and the average age there was probably 19 or 20. Yeah, kids, kids. Super young. Um, I believe that their mindset at that point was, hey, guys, we're we're probably going to go now. They knew. And so when Chesty said we're outnumbered, they can't get away from us now, he showed the signs that, hey, it's time to level up. It's time to go to the next level. It's time to do what we were trained to do. But I believe that he also gave him a greater purpose. It wasn't just let's beat the enemy, which at the end of the day, the end of that battle, mm -hmm. we lost over 800 Marines, but the Marines took out 35,000 enemy troops. So, wow. and many of those men made it home. And I think that here's the important part. When he said, hey, let's level up, he didn't say, hey, let's go fight. Yeah. He said, fight with me so we can go home. He gave them a destination. And I think, John, that... The way he got them to fight, he didn't bark an order at them. He inspired yeah. them. He could have said, hey, you, you, you filthy animals, you need to fight. Yeah. Here's your orders. And he yeah. said, fight with me so we can go home. I want to get you home to mom's cooking. I want to get you home to your families. Will you fight with me so we can do that? And they said, yeah. And for the longest time, John, there was a neighbor of mine four doors down. His name was Jerry. He's now in a he's in a senior citizen home now. He yeah. Every day and check his mail with his walker. He was there. He he was actually there. 
And so I don't know. He was in that battalion? Yeah, he was there during the the fight at what they call Frozen Chosen because he's got freezing to death out there. Yeah. I think I think right now what Chesty did back then and what we can do now is we can send a message. And this is what I believe on leveling up. Leveling up is yeah. two parts. Yeah. Leveling up is first stating I'm going to level up. People need to know. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they have to have permission to level up. But yeah. what I found is people need to have some sort of validation that we're going to do this. We're not in it alone. Yeah. So yeah. Chesty said, hey, fight with me. He didn't say, hey, go fight. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stay back here and watch the food and you go fight. I believe that the very first thing we need to do is say, I'm going to level up or, or John, do you want to level up with me? So there's strength in numbers. And then the second thing is we need to know how and, and how to level up is really about where do you want to go? What level is that? Is that, is that a new career as a fractional CFO? Is, Is that accomplishing this goal? In other words, just like Chessie said, hey, we got to fight like hell so we can go home. We need to level up so we can get here. I think destination yeah. is so important. We need to know we're, where we're going. You know, I've been talking just in my practice because I'm I'm a fractional CMO as well. Like, and you and I have been talking about like the narrative of it's what you're home. doing and what you're trying to accomplish. Fight with me so we can go home. That's right. And, and the, the if the corporations and the businesses that will survive this change are going to embrace that mentality. And it's not going to be selfish, yes. right? But the ones that are saying, you know, we hear this all the time, like Wall Street saying, get your ass back, the thumb down. Get back in line. I want my thumb back on you because I got to yeah. see what you're doing. They're not going to survive any of this. But the ones that are like, That's right. we're in this together. We've got a greater place to go. Let's do this together. They'll live. They'll survive. And that's less of them, Eric. There's less of them that do that. That's right. That's why I think as you circle back on this and you go, all right, well, I want to level up. Those that are leveling up right now are standing head and shoulders above the rest. And that's who we want to work yep. with. Right? Is, I would say as executive leaders or leaders of small companies or business owners, you want people to say, I'm ready to level up. And yeah. certain phrases have become so popular in the last year that I started to save. Here, here's the biggie. So so I've got my I've got my new book coming out soon. Unleash your business warrior. Unleash your business warrior. When's it coming out? It is coming out. Our goal is to have it first quarter. We're finishing the final, final edits right now. And uh, we got the cover. The cover looks amazing. And then we're just mm-hmm. fine tuning the interior. So we're hoping, you know, maybe February or March it'll be out. So um, I have a saying in there that is caught on like wildfire as soon as I share it. And, yeah. and so I, I talk about the fact that right now in the workplace, and this has always been this way, except yeah. you can tell it's different now. There's there's two types of people in the workplace. There's business workers, those who show up to work. Yep. There's business warriors, those who show up to win. Mm-hmm. And and when you want to win, that's when you need a coach. If you're playing the game and you want to yeah. win, a coach will help you. LeBron James has a coach. Michael Jordan mm-hmm. had a coach. Kobe Bryant had a coach. Michael Phelps had a coach. Um, Katie Ledecky had a coach. Mary mm-hmm. Lou Ritten had a coach. You name them. Gabby Douglas had a coach. They all had coaches. Why? They My hero, coaches. Serena Williams. Coaches. Yep. Yeah, coaches. They have coaches, right? Why? And at the end of the day, the coach will hold you accountable. The coach will help help you get on track with your goals. At the end of the day, a coach helps you win. And so everyone listening right now, one of the first things you can do is every day when you step across the threshold at work, the doorway, whether it's a virtual doorway or a physical doorway, never show up to work, show up to win. And your wins can be, I just increased morale. I just helped hit this goal. Sure. I just supported this team member. So so we need to find the wins. That puts us in thrival mode, not survival mode. I love the word thrival. So I want to stay with that for a second because there's there's a there's a there's two sides to that. And I, I this the piece that you I, I get you right show up to win. Right? Yeah. Show up to win. Do the things to level up, right? Know what you're trying to do. Help others. Do do all that, right? Show up to win. Now, here's the other thing, and this applies to less people, just mathematically speaking. Mm -hmm. There are less leaders, technically speaking, in a leadership role than there are workers. And that's just math, right? Now, everybody should have leadership qualities, but sometimes it's just a smaller population. My advice to all the leaders out there is show up 
to be that coach. That's and right. I'm yeah. telling you, right? And I'm not saying Bobby Knight that beats the shit out of his players, right? <laughs> Show up to be that coach, be that chesty puller, be that. That's right. Let's go home. Under you know, that's your job, right? You have to motivate and inspire. And and wow. I'm afraid. Yeah. I'm afraid the poor leaders, like they suffered so much during the pandemic as well that they forgot that. You right. are there to inspire and lead and that's show right. up to be that coach. I think that we we as leaders piggybacking on that, t- two great words you said, coaching and inspiration. Um it's so important for leaders who want to level up to understand what their role is as a leader. Mm-hmm. And and as a leader, we're coaches, we're guides, we're mentors. Mm-hmm. We are we are inspirational, motivational. We have these things. I don't think most leaders show up every day to fulfill their purpose. I think sometimes they just show up to work. And well, and when that, that purpose is there, then they yeah. can make the impact. You know, when you invent a company or build a company or start a company or invent a thing and a company comes out of it, very little of that experience gives you the coaching training that you need, right? Coaches need coaches. I wrote about this in in my book, talking about books, Revolt, which is now out. You can get it. Um, And I talk about this because I talk about in the fractional economy, which is growing like crazy, like leadership is changing, right? People love fractional pros. Fractional pros love being fractional pros. But what so often happens is somebody like me comes in to a business. And in my case, I like, yeah, I've got marketing now. You don't have to worry about it, right? It's I got it. That's what I'm here for. Look at all the gray hair. I can handle it, right? <laughs> and that then displaces that leader from that. It relieves them of that duty. And what so often I and this is what this is the chapter in the book on leadership I write about is like, I want to help. Like, okay, guess what? You're no, you're no longer chief cook and bottle washer, right? CEO, CFO, CTO, all of that. And I write about this. I'm like, you have four ships to sail, right? Because you're going to let go of the things Mm -hmm. to somebody else who's more capable. You have to really own leadership, partnerships, stewardship. These, these, like that's your new job, right? right? Leadership, stewardship, partnerships, and relationships, a lot of ships. You have four ships to sail, right? Yeah. It be, but if you've been doing the CEOing and the COOing, you well, haven't. It, you know what I mean? That stuff doesn't come naturally. You have to learn. You have to level up as so a me, leader. Your skills there. Yeah, and here's something that you know. I I told you before. I've done some of my coaching work on a fractional basis, where I was hired to come in as kind mm-hmm. of that interim fractional COO and help get things aligned and. Even mm-hmm. though at the point when I was doing it, I wasn't calling it fractional until I met you. And I go, well, wait a minute. I've, I've done that. <laughs> Here's what I experienced. And maybe you did too. When you go in on a fractional basis, yep. you see more about what's missing or the gaps in a company than the people that are there. Do you, do you agree with that? Have you experienced that? We do. In fact, when we teach it, we call that we call these seven energies of fractional. And the one you're getting at is what we call ally energy. So I'll come into a business with my 33 years since I graduated from college and been in the workforce, getting wiser every day about what I do. And I'll see things just through the course of my failures and successes like, oh, I call it seeing around corners. So the owner, the business, my client, my whatever, they can look at me and go, I'm glad you have marketing, but I have this other issue. You know, where is this road going to go? What's going to happen because of this? We become that ally. It's half of the value of what fractionals deliver to their clients. At least. Ally energy is at least half. I've sat in with organizations where, you know, as a, as a fractional, you go in and you attend some of their meetings and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the worst yes. meeting I've ever been in my life. And they, they think it's good until you break the layers apart. And you're like, all right, well, here's it. You guys, I know you want to level up. Here's some things you need to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say that it is so important for people to consider becoming fractional. And it's also important for businesses to consider hiring fractional because the experience that you have going into the fractional side is is tremendous, yeah. especially from the vantage point. But also for businesses that want to hire fractional professionals, yeah. they're going to give you a vantage point that that is very hard to see from the inside. Um, exactly. that's It's impossible, right? What does somebody want to say? You can't read the ingredients of the pickle jar when you're on the, when you're a pickle inside of the jar, right? <laughs> it's right. just not possible. But you're right, right that that objectivity, 
We used to yeah. get that in boards. We used to get that, and there were ways that that came out. But I think that I think we just sort of aged out and and got tired of that, or maybe it just stopped working effectively. So you're seeing during this age, this post pandemic, oh my god, age, you're seeing a rise in the fractional marketplace. Yeah, we have. Oh my god, tremendously. I mean, it's there's. Well, I'll give you some data. So this year, I think if you if you if you use LinkedIn Sales Navigator and just ask it. How many people self-identify as fractional pros? I think it's 85,000 people in LinkedIn, wow. right? Jeez. Last year, I think it was 2,000. So the, so the arc is through the roof, right? And, and, okay. and, and that's not the number of people like we teach 20 people a month. We got thousands of people in our community. We've got sister communities. Like it's through the roof. We had FRAC 2023 here. Wow. We're doing it in 2024. Like the, the demand is through the roof for the, 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 the curiosity and the desire so here's what's interesting. Let me just so I yeah. understand and so the audience understands. You have business executives, professionals, experienced, yep. talented people like yourself, decades in the workplace that yep. are now becoming fractional and taking their skill set into a business, mm -hmm. which means, that, OK, so so I'm leaving the corporate side and I'm going yep. in as an individual fractional business professional. However, in mm -hmm. order to level up, I still need to be part of a team like a fractional totally. organization. Yeah. Absolutely. We teach that. It's like, listen, it doesn't mean you're going to sit at home, yeah. right? And and just, chit, you know, it's it's very hard to be a guide, a captain, a director, right? Yeah. Um, we have successfully removed what one of my friends, a fractional friend calls the nonsense from it. It's like fractional does a really good job of removing nonsense. Six hours of wasted meetings, you know, political, guard, all this work nonsense that's out yeah. there. Like fractional is really good at removing that from the day and, and you become yeah. very, very useful in that. Well, if you're not spending time on that, you're really getting into the the, the, the leadership and the guidance and the, and the stewardship stuff as a fractional pro. And that's not easy to do. So right. it's like eating really rich food. You can only have a little bit every now, every now and then. So oh, you it's delicious. <laughs> that's right. You got to build up that tolerance for it. But yeah. Let, yeah. Let me, let me say, or ask you this. Then when you're seeing the rise in fractional, right? Here's these people yeah. leveling up, you know, their business model for themselves. Yeah. They're still reaching out and they still need coaching. Oh, for sure. I do it every single day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we do it in courses. We and we continue to develop our courses. We, you know, I'm on podcasts all the time. I'm like doing everything I can. And here's why, Eric. Here's why is there are tens of millions of people now who are super awesome, super great. But the normal structure that's eroding just does not utilize all of their gifts. That's right. Well, and just, so, and so, if we can go, okay, that's fine. It is what it is. And they typically to be over. They typically tend to be over forty-five years old. You know, yeah. there's this real thing called ageism, and so all those gifts aren't getting utilized, which is a loss for society, right? Like if if you have all these abilities and all this wisdom, and it doesn't have any place to go in the corporate world. For those corporations that don't take advantage of it, it absolutely belongs in fractional. Isn't it interesting that corporations, when somebody's about to retire, I meet with so many people that are like, we got to get as much information out of this guy. He just said he's retiring next month. Yeah. And then he retires and he goes and be fractional. And he'll, he'll become fractional and he gives it to other companies. But the yeah, right. Companies well, with, no, it's because, it. right? Like it's a, it's, it's a backpack, right? right? You, you, you're going through life. And every year I say is another learned MBA. Right. Just by yeah. succeeding and failing in the nature of going through life, you add more wisdom into your backpack. So it really doesn't make sense, to be honest with you, that the older you get, the less value you have. That's inverse. That's right? right. Because you have more and more wisdom. How old was Chesty Puller when he used all of that wisdom to win that battle? He wasn't a spring chicken. He wasn't a 25 year old. He certainly wasn't. He had to be in his like late thirties, probably, you know, I mean, yeah. so the yeah. older we are, the more wise we are, yeah. the, the better leaders and guides we are. So that's one part. So all of that energy, all those millions of people that are like me and you, right. If we go fractional, all of a sudden, all of that ability and skill can get into the marketplace. Here's the other side of it where I get really jazzed. We have 33 million businesses that are not on the fortune 500 in America. We know there's 500 on fortune 500 because that's the math. And but there's 33 million that are trying to grow and bootstrapping and you know they're doing 10 million they're doing 1 million they're doing 100 million. They now have access to skill and talent and wisdom that's never 
That's been right. available to that segment before. What are we going to do to our GDP, our culture, our people by connecting those two? What was it when you and I were kids? Wonder Twins, right? The two powers connect and Just it was activate. a great cartoon. It was so yes. simple. Right, right. That's why I get so excited. I think I literally so, think that that fractional is the best thing for America. I really do right at this moment. What, Here's what's interesting, though. The, the time frame that you're talking about, going from 2,000 people who identify as fractional to 85,000 yeah. on LinkedIn. It's crazy. That's the same time period when I started to notice a year ago that yeah. the mindset has shifted to I'm ready to level up. And hence the 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 rise and the interest in personal coaching. Yeah. So, you know, when we really look back, it was really around that March of 2023, about about nine, 10 months ago. Yeah, and there was a shift, and and I'm I'm telling you, I think I know what it was, John. Was there a moment? I I think there was, and the moment was, the moment was there was an announcement that was made because I think we would all agree that there was an announcement made when we went into the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The World Health Organization, the CDC, said we are now on, uh, we have declared a worldwide pandemic, and then the announcement went out. Everybody go home. Okay, yeah. not everybody. Whatever the case is. Yeah, yeah. And about a year and a half-ish later, there was an announcement that you can start to transition people back into the workplace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here's, here's what I feel. I feel that even though everybody, so the, the pandemic happened on a definitive date, transitioning mm -hmm. back, that was kind of a definitive date. Mm -hmm. There was a definitive date on it's over. Even though I do believe, and this is where I think a lot of people have struggled, we haven't been on the same page with everything as a community, as a whole. Right, as a society. Yep. But but it was around April of 20, maybe April 11th, they can fact check me, April of April 11th or so of 2023. This I last believe, April. Yes, this last April, I believe President Biden said, we're finished with the pandemic phase. So okay. maybe there were some people that early on never went into it. Maybe there were some people that were late to mm -hmm. it. whatever the case was. There was an official announcement, just like when Chesty Puller said, will you fight with me right now? Yeah. So as I look back, yes, there's people, everybody had a different definition of when they came out of the pandemic and I get right. that, but there was an official announcement. And so I do believe whether you agree with the announcement or not, it was made. Yeah. And, and it was official. And so when we officially say I'm leveling up, there's a transformation that happens. And there is. And, 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 the, and, and then the matter in which to do it and where you're going to level up. It's, but to your point, pick a good coach, choice. right? Because it really you have to be careful. You It really, really matters. Because if you're saying I'm just going to prepare myself yeah. for the way things used to be, you're choosing extinction. You are. Yeah. I am going to prepare myself for the way I think things should be, or I want them to be, or, the, or skate where the puck is going. Yeah. Well, then you get to survive another day. And, and so you really get to see that the messaging impacts the motivation. Oh, my God. So much. And I'm so hungry for that. I'm seeing we're, we're, we're at seven minutes yeah. before the top of the hour. But I'm seeing so much. And when I think about leveling up, and, and, and we're going to talk so much about it through all these podcasts. Oh, my gosh. Is, is we are so hungry for that, right? Like, we, we, I think we're aging out of this moment when we're all divided. Yeah. We don't like each other politically. All of this nonsense. Like, I think it's That's like, right. okay, it's finally, it's going to flame out because it's not sustainable. I'll cite Brené Brown again. She says we're hardwired for connection. That's just in the natural human DNA. Yeah. We're hardwired 100%. for connection, which makes you think about, well, then how, how should we be connected? Should we be connected in a way where I can't listen to you and you can't listen to me and we hate each other? Or is there another way? And that is our next evolution is connecting. Well, well. that connectivity is so important. And I'll, and I'll tell you, you brought up the Marines earlier. And mm -hmm. I know that when I went in, they look for people for their organization that want a sense of belonging, a pride of belonging. Mm -hmm. And and we do have that internally. Like I think the most It's in our DNA. It's in our chromosomes. And and here's what's weird. We're social creatures that when the pandemic yep. was declared, we were socially distanced. And so it went against everything of who we are, even though it meant we didn't have to see certain people. And there was a blessing to that too, right? Like, yeah, right. right. Hey, I'd like to come see you, but they told me I can't. Oh man. Uh, too bad. Sorry, I would, but you know. 
So yeah. here's the crazy part. I think that impact, John, of social creatures socially distanced, I yeah. think it's a long-lasting impact. And so our ability to level up is really helping to connect people. And that's that's for us as individuals. That's as fractionals. That's as, as business leaders and owners and entrepreneurs. That's our, our quest is to level up connectivity. Really, how do we bring people to – and I believe you can come back stronger because – the country sure. in the military is always stronger after they face their greatest challenges. So right now yeah. there is so much opportunity because we've all faced a four year challenge. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And we have, yeah. and, 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 uh, we are hungry to connect. We're, Absolutely. We're, we're really dissatisfied by not connecting. It just gets worse every day and nobody likes it. Like the national mood is, you, you know, you pull what people think about politicians and the general sense is, Oh, you all suck. Right. Yeah. There's just a sourness. And then how do you feel about the economy, regardless of the numbers? I think it's terrible. Like there's a sourness and a dourness yeah. across the land, and that can't last forever. Right. We're not and, it's not a natural state of being optimistic, right. positive, authentic, happy. These are where we want to be. And this is where we need to level ourselves up to. I I believe I and I'm gonna just I know we're running out of time here. I know we are, but I agree with you that there's so much opportunity ahead for us. And I believe that if you want to capture the opportunity in 2024, mm -hmm. you have to immediately you, you have to immediately claim, put your put your plant your flag in the ground that I am going to level up. It's the first just step. Just that. Just decide to do it. That's yeah. right. And then you're going to surround yourself with people like you, people like me, other people yeah. who will level up. We've got a level up community that we're starting. So right now yeah. there's two of us. Well, three. Safi's involved. Hey, you know what? Safi, we'll our more. illustrious producer. Yeah, our producer Safi yeah. Gilman is is number three in the Level Up community. But the reason that we launched this, John, is we know that we know you want to level up out there. We know it. It's not a mystery. There's more people yeah. ready to level up now than to stay leveled down, and, yeah. and we're committed on a regular basis to give you the tools for that. And that's what I'm yeah. so excited about. I love sharing ways for people to become better and well and leveled up. That's a good point. So so we're going to close on that, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, so for everybody, thank you, everybody, by the way, who's tuned in, and, and we look forward to having live casts, and this one's a studio yeah. cast. But, um, uh, Eric, I'll ask you for people that are, okay, things have to be different for me now. Yeah. And in the context of work, let's just keep it there, in the context of career. For 2024, what are two or three things you would say, yeah. like, when you're thinking about level up, think about this. Lay it on me. So when you're thinking about leveling up, I feel that you should identify some goals that you're unwavering on. That at the end of 2024, where do you want to be? And that could be from a financial standpoint, a fitness standpoint, a community outreach standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, a, a family standpoint. Find areas that you want to go to the next level. Because to say you want to level up is one thing. To say what level that is is a whole nother one. The other thing that I would recommend, let's just keep this on the professional side. There's yeah. so many people that they have dreams of growing in the organization they want or maybe mm -hmm. finding somewhere else to work. But I always tell people to write your dream job description, write a job description. You say, when I level up, I want to get to this level in my career, create the dream job description, your purpose, all mm -hmm. of your bullet points that, that every day you said, when I get to this level, I'm going to love everything I'm doing and strive for that. Don't settle for your current job description. Help create one. I created one at a media company and I achieved it and exceeded it because I mm -hmm. created that. And I said, here's the level I want to go to. So not only do we have to say I want to level up, we have to say how and where this is going to take us. Well, it's it's really important, and awareness is really really important. That that, that so that's your job and homework. Everybody is yeah. write it down, right? And don't make it too complicated, right? Just just write it down like this because you're worth it. We're all worth it. Right. You're here. You're worthy of it. You're far more capable to achieve it. We survived. We you survived, right? And so, so, so write it down that between now and the next episode, like just write it down. And I don't know if our next one's going to be call in or not, but I do want to hear from listeners. Like, here's what I did to level up and, and Agreed. tell me more, but, but write it down and share it with others. That's share it with point. others. Don't announcing stick it in the drawer. It is important. Yeah. Announcing it is really important. Yeah. Cause you're kind of, uh, I'm in this great breakthrough table, uh, here in the twin cities. It's really helpful. Uh, it's it's a self help thing. It's a self improvement thing, and um, yeah, with Steve Blackshrewd, and it's just it's all about that, right? Like you know what? 
when you write it down it's an, and you're consistent about it, yeah. you're sending signals to the universe that you're intentional and you intend for this to happen, right? Um, and you just doing that is super powerful. So that's my homework. That's your homework. That's our listeners' homework. And everybody who is going to level up in 2024 is going to be a year for that. That's everybody's homework. Hey. Um, what a great show. What a great show. Did you have fun? I had a blast. I Like I said, I, I couldn't wait to do this with you because <laughs> anytime you and I talk about leveling up, I yeah. identify new levels I want to go to. Yeah. So let's see. Even though we're sending great messages out there, I got, yeah. I'm leaving this fired up, John. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> me too. I, I just love this because we're helping people. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll close it out here. Thank you, uh, Staffy, uh, who's our producer. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody who's, who's thinking about leveling up. Uh, we look forward to having you come back, listen to our outro music, enjoy it, and think about leveling up. Thank you, everybody. See you.